Okay, welcome back. So now is the time where we finally get to start actually writing some code. And we're going to start by talking about HTML. In the next unit, we're going to cover a lot of different parts of HTML. We're going to learn by the end how to write simple HTML documents. We want to understand the difference between closing and self-closing tags, tags with attributes. We want to definitely use MDN a lot, which you've already seen. And at the very end, I'll give you an image of a website and you should be able to write the corresponding HTML. So translate an image to actual code. So we're going to start by talking a little bit about the history of HTML. So again, it stands for Hypertext Markup Language. Think back to that first um, introduction to front end video. HTML is the structure and content of a page, not the styling, not the interactivity, just the structure and content. Back in the academic community in the year 1989, early 1990, there's not exactly a hard start date to HTML. But in that time, basically people were exchanging papers, giant thesis papers and scientific documents, technical documents, and they all have very specific formatting. But when they're being exchanged, there was no way to actually send that formatting across the internet. So what I mean is, um, let's say you wanted to have a paper that looked like this. And this is a style guide that I found on writing scientific papers. So let's just take the abstract section. So your abstract looks like there's a heading here. It's a little bolded and bigger text. We've got this sort of introduction to one part of the abstract and then a bunch of bullet points. We've got italicized and bolded text. And then it looks like a link to another part of the paper. And then lastly, we've got some nested bullet points. So this information, if I wanted to send this to somebody, but all that I could send is text. So I can't send an image of this. I can't send like the actual structure of it. All I can send is some text. So that might look something like this. The problem is how do I take this text here, which is the same text as over here, and how do I encode the structure? How do I say this abstract, which I actually don't have here, but if I added that in, how would I say this is bold and bigger text? And so is function. And there's a bullet point right here. And another bullet point right here. So that is what HTML lets us do. It lets us take text and content. And just by writing some other text on top of it, it lets us specify exactly this is a heading, this is bold, this is italicized, this is a link. And that last part, link, uh, is actually really important. That's where the name comes from, hypertext markup language, because HTML allows us to create hyperlinks. And linking to documents together is really important. Many scientific papers are going to be referencing other scientific papers, um, footnotes, and all sorts of citations. HTML facilitated that and made a really big impact. And then it basically caught on. People realized it's pretty simple. It's not a very intimidating thing, so it moved kind of away from purely academic situations to kind of broader use. All the way up to uh, MySpace. If you remember MySpace or if you ever had a MySpace, um, you could actually edit your profile just by writing HTML. So there were people who were absolutely not technical, and they were still able to write HTML and CSS to add some interesting features to the page to make some customized visuals. Okay, so let's keep that in mind. We have this giant thing of text that we want to be able to encode some structure in. I want to say, this is bold, or this is a bullet point, and so on. HTML allows us to do that using HTML tags. So what we basically do is we take some content in the middle and we sandwich it between an opening tag and a closing tag. This lets me specify specific parts of the page or of um, the paragraph or the content that I could say right in between these two tags is a bold, right between these two is a link, right between these two is italicized text, and so on. So I'll show you that. We could go through here and decide, okay, this is going to be a heading on our page. And we'll wrap it in an H1 tag, which we haven't introduced yet. We will get there. But for now, it lets us specify that this is the largest heading on our page. The next thing we might want to do is go ahead and make this bolded here. So the way that we make things bold, there's a few. The simplest one is to wrap it in something called a B tag to say that it's bold. For those of you who know HTML, the B tag is actually on its way out. It's being deprecated, which means that uh, you're basically you're not supposed to use it anymore. It works just fine, 
there is an alternative we'll discuss in a little bit. Likewise, I might want to make something, let's say, a separate paragraph. So I wanted to add some spacing between it. this line and the next line. So I add a paragraph. And what that will do is whatever's between these two tags goes on its own line. It has um, basically returns on either side. So as you can see, the general rule applies uh, to all the tags that we've seen, where we had an H1 or a bold tag or a paragraph tag. Don't focus on the tags themselves just yet. We're going to have plenty of videos discussing the individual ins and outs of all the tags. But again, remember this pattern. We have tag name starting, tag name closing, some content in between. Okay, so in the next video, we're now going to actually make a new real HTML file, not just a scientific document with some text, but a real file, and we're going to open it in the browser and actually see the HTML.